Hello, my name is Rocky. I'm an engineer here at Arclight Dynamics, and today I get to show you a new product. This is the Arclight CNC user interface and control system. So let's go ahead and dive right in. To start, double click on the icon that's on your desktop. Once the program loads, go ahead and hit E stop and power. This gives power to the motors so that we can home the machine. You do that by clicking home all in the top right corner. All right, once the machine has homed, go ahead and hit file, choose the file that you'd like to run and hit select. Now we can see our part on the plot screen. The next thing we'll do is go set program zero. So hit shift and use the control keys to come over to your material and turn the laser on. If this material were square to the machine, we could go ahead and set our program zero right off the bat. However, this material has a slight skew to the machine. Now, where this is gonna come in handy is on thicker, heavier materials. Sometimes it's not easy to square them up to the machine. It's not easy to maneuver the plate on top of the table. So you can go ahead and apply a skew and, and that will help so that you don't have to square your machine or square your material to your machine. So in order to do that, we're gonna jog over to the corner. That's about where we want it. So we're gonna hit at corner. Then we're gonna go ahead and jog up. We're gonna come over to another point along that same edge. I'm gonna go into bump mode so it's easier to control. Once I find the point along that edge, I'm going to hit at skew point and then apply skew. So at this point, I can remove the skew at any time by clicking the remove skew button. Let's go over to the plot window and see what happened. So at this point, I can see that my, my part is actually skewed and the X and Y axis are actually skewed. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the machine tracing, which is these yellow lines by hitting this broom to clean up the plot view a little bit. Now that we've set the skew, we're gonna set the program zero by going back to the jog mode, coming down to the corner that we wanna select, which in this case is the bottom left corner. We're going to hit set start. And then after we do that, so you go ahead and test IHS, the torch will come touch off the material. And then you're good to go ahead and run your part. All right, so we've simulated an error to show you the error cut recovery process. Uh, if you're ever in the middle of a cut and your plasma machine gets turned off or somebody turns the compressor off and you lose arc, this is exactly what you do to recover your cut. Rather than wasting this bracket, we come over and hit cut recovery. Come up and hit reverse. And we wanna make sure we're back past uh, the last spot where we have a good cut and then we're going to jog off into space for the lead in so we're coming over to the right a little bit for this and then you're good to go ahead and hit resume cut Alrighty, at this point we have our bracket cut. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you a free cut feature to trim up the material to give you a good remnant. So with 16 gauge, the first thing it will do is we'll square this. 
to the table. Go ahead and throw the laser back on for this. And it will jog over to the location we want to start the pierce. I'll slow down the jog speed so it's a little bit easier to find the edge. Alrighty. And once we've found that, we're going to come over here and click this button here until we get to free cut. Once we're at free cut, we're going to go ahead and turn off the laser. And then all we do to use the free cut is hold the shift key and the arrow in whatever direction you want to cut. So in this case, we're cutting to the right, so I'm gonna hold shift and the right arrow on the keyboard. All right, now that we've finished our rip cut, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the park button. This is gonna send the torch to the back right corner of the machine. This allows me easy access to the material so I can pull it off, store it, and put a next part next piece of material on for our next project. Okay, so now we can show you some other features of the software. So we're gonna go ahead and click the status tab. In this tab, you're gonna be able to see all the inputs and outputs and functions that are currently turned on. Um, you turn those functions on in the process tab so, for instance, turning on torch height control with just a click. Um, in this tab also, if you hit program to override and then go to override, while you're running your program, if you need to adjust the arc volts or feed rate because of a certain material that you're running, you could go ahead and do that here. And then if you click back to the program tab, it'll run the program values. If you click the over, or if you're on the override tab, it'll run the override values. Click the miscellaneous tab. Some of the important ones here, home, home tools. So home position five directly correlates with the park position. Um, if you wanted to change that, you could. You can hit edit and change these values to change your park position. If you want to utilize other positions that aren't currently utilized, position one and position two are open. Uh, position three correlates to the change consumables tab. So if you pause a program, you can hit change consumables. The torch will come forward to right about here, and then you can change your consumables easily before resuming. And then lastly, the G-code tab, where you can review your G-code and issue MDI. The nice part about this software is that we can use the keyboard as a pendant. So in order to do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a part loaded and that you're on the status tab. But look down here at this button over here as we're gonna toggle this with the keyboard. So we're currently in bump. If I hit shift F3, it moves it to jog mode. If I hit shift F4, we go back to bump. If I hit shift F5, we go to free cut. Free cut is only an option when you have a program loaded. So make sure you have a program loaded to access that. So if we go back to shift F3, we go to the jog mode. If the jog is too high, what I can do is hit control and down and it'll lower my jog speed. If I hit control and up, it will raise my jog speed. If I go shift F4 back to the bump feature and I want to increase the distance per bump or decrease the distance per bump, I'm gonna hit shift F6, which is going to increase the distance per bump. And I'm gonna hit control F6 to decrease the distance per bump. <clears throat> Another feature that the keyboard can do is if we hold control and home and we hit that twice, it will home the machine.
So while the machine is in this forward position, we'll go ahead and really quickly talk about the laser. Um, the laser is a feature that's very good for really defining the edge of where you want to set your program zero. Uh, it helps with reducing the amount of waste in your scrap material because you can get very precise with it. And the offset from the laser to the torch already comes integrated. So your torch knows where the laser is and you'll be able to cut right on that laser point every time. Another feature is the collision detection. So without collision detection, if the torch crashed into a tip up, it would keep firing so long as there was a viable ground, if it was over the material or something like that. And you, you end up screwing up your part because you're sending the torch, the plasma arc sideways into the material, doing all sorts of bad things. The nice thing about collision detection is as soon as you hit that tip up, instead of going and piercing with a torch land sideways or something like that, you'll pause the program because the sensor will come unattached and therefore your program will pause, you won't mess up any of your parts and you can go right back to cutting. Once you replace the torch and clear the error on the screen. That's all I got for you today. We'll have subsequent videos with a lot more information, so please stay tuned. Thank you.